Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So the software I usually use for my mic isn't working right now, so the audio quality is going to stink. Anyways, I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know just about the basics of how Fire Alpaca works and what most of the buttons mean and what they do. I may do a tweening slash frame by frame tutorial in the future, but right now I'm just going to go over the basics of Fire Alpaca. So let's get into it. Anyways, here are the settings I use for Fire Alpaca. I click standard and then my width is 3800 and my height is 2080. Um, and then these don't really matter, they're kind of automatic. But I use a transparent background usually because then I can just change the color. So right here, um, I have this kind of like color palette thing where I can just move my mouse to any color I want. Um, there's different things you can do to um, see your color palette. You can do like a color wheel, or you can do just what I have right here. I prefer this personally, but you can do whichever one makes you feel more comfortable. Anyways, so with the color, I just have it at this size. You can actually move it um, to be as big as you like, but I just prefer it, you know, to be more of a medium-ish size. Just gets easier for me to handle, so I have more space to draw in the middle. Anyways, you can have up to two colors at a time. So let's say I was going to do something pink. Uh, I could do one color here, and I'd click this other square, and then I would do another color here. And those will come important for another tool later on that I'll show you guys. And if you click this, it'll just make your brush completely transparent. So if you're drawing something, it just make it transparent. Um, I don't really use that that much because I have the eraser tool. The next button is the eraser tool. Pretty self-explanatory. It's right under the little brush thing right here. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. It just erases things that you drew. Okay, so this tool, it just creates like blocks. I mean, it just creates like some, you know, rectangles. It's not that important. I personally don't use it, but you might want to use it if you want, you know, like just it's really quick and easy to do like black squares with but then we have the fill bucket tool so let's say you were drawing something and then you do the fill bucket tool and then you know whatever color you pick it would fill that spot now, only if it's close if it's not a close spot that it won't work next we have this fade tool I just call it the fade tool because it makes things fade so what you do with this is you pick the two colors that you want and then you go either down and it'll like fade, you know, colors. Or you can do it sideways. That is a bad example. Or you can do it like sideways, you know. Um, there's tons of ways you can do it. You can do it any direction you want. And it'll create kind of like a background, kind of like themed from what you picked. So. I actually use this tool a lot for my backgrounds since it's just really quick and easy and it's not a solid color background. Next we have this tool. Now what this does is it just creates a square for you to crop out. So let's say I wanted to crop out a certain square of my drawing and boom I can put something else right in that spot and it won't really matter. Um, it still goes in the same layer unless you copy and paste it and then delete it off this layer which is a lot of work and I highly uh, I encourage you not to do all that work, but this just creates like a square cutout. And then we have this lasso tool, which will do it of any size you want. So let's say I was doing, um, I don't know, just something of this shape. It's weird and unpredictable. Well, there's no tool for that, so I just go like that, and then it would cut out. And then what I do to get off the screen, which no one ever told me, is I click the square tool again, and then just click the screen, and then it goes away. Also some tools down here I haven't really experimented with because with me the font never works. Like the text just doesn't work for me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It won't let me like turn it but the tools down here aren't really as important to me but you can try experimenting with them if you want. Like I don't use this. I don't move the screen that often. I usually just keep it stationary. Next we have these things down here. These are the different types of brushes you can use. Um, I have my pen on 7, and here's the brush sizes in the far right corner. By the way, you can move everything. You can move the brush sizes up here. You can move it anywhere you want. It's like, I just prefer to have it done here. I use 7 for my lines. 
um, personally because it's the right size for me. But then again, some people use, you know, like smaller lines and stuff. Um, I use it on 7, and I'll just do it on 7 to show you guys just like the pen tool, you know. These lines are not straight at all because I'm not trying. Then we have the pen tool that fades in and out. So if I were redrawing, as you can see, like on the sides, it like fades. See? It fades in and out. And it's good if you're doing something kind of like wavy, I guess, and you want it to be like that. I personally have probably only used that tool like once, but... Then we have the pencil tool. It's basically, in my opinion, the same thing as the paintbrush tool. I don't see much of a difference, personally. Um, but you can use that if you like instead. I mean, to me, I don't see any difference, but... Then we have the eraser tool. It just erases lines. You can either do it here, or you can click this button right here. It doesn't matter which one you choose. It'll be the eraser. Then we have the airbrush tool. Or you pick a color and it'll do an airbrush of it. I use this quite a bit. I love this tool. The only complaint I have is that the lines are really thin. So like 70, see how thin it is compared to the other ones? I don't like that. That's why I always have to use big, like, you know, sizes for it to be that size. So, um, by the way, you cannot color art with the um, tool right there because it, you know, you can't use a bucket tool where there's an air rush because see how it just doesn't work. It's the one thing also I don't like about Fire Alpaca. You can't use the air rush tool with like um, the bucket tool. So what I do is I draw the drawing and then I add the airbrush tool after I've done all the coloring. And I accidentally added an airbrush tool because you can add more of these if you want with different settings, but I have two airbrushes. Next we have the watercolor brush. Uh, this brush I also don't see that much of a difference with compared to these two, but you can use it if you'd like. Personally, I don't see a difference unless you use effects, but I don't see that much of a difference. Then we have the blur tool. Um, what this does is it blurs stuff. It does a really bad job at doing it, by the way. I recommend not using a blur tool because it makes everything insanely laggy. See, like, look at that. It's so laggy. Um, I rarely ever use it. It's bad. It's a bad tool. The lag is just so bad. Then we have the smudge tool. What it does is it smudges things. Personally, I do not like this tool because Spiral Packet did a really bad job designing this tool because it doesn't work right. Um, those are like the main tools. Uh, there's also like flat brush. And there's also some, you know, like random ones. But I'm not going to go into those. You can test them out for yourself because there's way too many. It's just like, you know, random tools like designs, like floral designs and stuff. I rarely use them, but it's really fun to test things out with. Alrighty, now let's go into layers. So right here is basically like your screen. It's another way to see your screen. And then right above that, we have the zoom in tool, where you can zoom into your drawing. And then we have the zoom out tool, so you can zoom out of your drawing. But what if you accidentally do it like this? And you're like, whoa, the borders aren't the same, everything's not the same, I'm going to freak out. Happened to me before. You just click this uh, magnifying tool, and it'll go back to the original size. I think this is the most handy tool, because it's just, I use it so much. I use these three tools so much. Um, then you can also tilt it um, different ways. Um, I don't know what this tool does because it doesn't work when I click it, but you can also mirror it too. Um, so like here, I'll just draw a line. I need to do something that makes it different. Okay. Just lines and see how it flips. It flips the whole drawing. Uh, I've never really used it before because I don't need to flip stuff. But then we have, you know, the layer thing right here. You can turn up the opacity. Opacity is basically what you can see of it. So I'll just draw this line right here and then if I turn down the opacity there's less of it you can see it's good for like ghost drawings and stuff and things that you don't really want seen like fog um, I do use this tool a little bit but um, I usually use other stuff and then there's also these I'll make a tutorial on these one day it's a lot to explain but just for now go with blending as normal uh, it's a lot to get into, and it'd probably make this video really, really long. It just affects, but don't test it out, because I don't want you guys messing up anything at the moment. I'll make a video on it soon. And then we have just, like, the layer settings, and then each layer. 
So you can name each layer, which is really good for tweening. I'll make a tutorial on tweening one day. So let's say this was the head of an animal. Um, I'd name it head, and then I'd draw the layer. And I'll just quickly like draw something right here. Just a really quick head. Alrighty. So there's this button right here. And it like it's really good for like tweening, in my opinion, for coloring the different frames. Uh, it hides it, so that if you have a different layer, then it'll hide it. Now I'm a I'm a noob, and I come up with different ways to do things. You can create a layer just easily right here, but it makes it automatically black. It's good if you're advanced and you do coloring. But what I do is I just go like this, um, make a new thing, copy the blank file, and then just place it here. Um, and then it'll add new stuff. Alright, and the final part of the tutorial are the buttons up here. So, help is just, you can go to their website and just, you know, kind of ask for help. Uh, window is just, uh, you can checkbox things that you want to see. If you want to see brush control, well, I don't care for brush control, but if you want to see that, you can um, add that and it'll come down to the bottom, reference, etc. Um, here are the ones that I have, so you can, here's the things that I have so you can get the exact screen that I have. I have color, brush, navigator, layer, brush size, and status bar. Um, those are just kind of the things that I have. Then there's tool, um, I just have, you know, brush. You can, um, click right here and it'll automatically give you it, but personally I don't think it's necessary to go here and find it and click it when you can just click it on the side, but everyone has different preferences. And then you can just kind of do the stuff that you can do over here. Uh, you can just do it over here. Um, Unskin mode, I will explain in a different video, but for now, if you're just drawing, you don't need unskin, onion skin mode. Um, just kind of the tools. Like, you can do a grid or a pixel grid. I personally don't use those, but you can do, you know, whatever pleases you. You know, everything you usually find. Um, I actually don't really use these, like, 3D perspective. I don't get how they work, but... I mean, you can test them out. And then, you know, select, blah, blah, blah. Filter, you can kind of mess around with these. I have two, layer, um, yeah, edit, etc. Um, and then there's also these tools up here. It'll add lines to your drawings. So, like, let's say I want straight lines only. Boom. Like, that'd be in certain spots, I mean. Um, then there's, like, diagonal ones. There's ones that are like this, which is confusing. Um, then there's ones like that, and then just ones you add, and then there's just ones like that. Uh, I just use off. I don't recommend using those, but then there's these things. Freehand is where you're drawing freely. Uh, it's something that you drew. Well, there's also a line. If you want to make a straight line, boom, straight line. If you want to make a polyline, you can just kind of you know, mess around with that. Huh. I hate when it does that. Um, then we have polygon, where you can just make a polygon. Um, not too interesting about that. Then we have the rectangle tool. Um, so if you want to make a blank rectangle and color it, you know, you can just do that. Um, then we also have the ellipse tool. This is the circle tool. I don't know why they call it ellipse tool. It was really confusing for me originally, but it's just the circle tool. If you want to make a street circle. Then we have the curve tool. I don't use that one either. I just use freehand usually. And I have this setting checked. And here's correction. So if I were to draw with no correction, see how squiggly the line is. Here, I'll move it down here. See how squiggly the line is if it's um, no correction. And then find a correction setting that fits you. I used to do 40, but I recommend not using 40 unless you're doing something really like, you know, if you're used to it, then do it. But I personally use 12 because it creates decently straight lines and I can add fluff. Uh, with 40, I cannot add fluff because see when I try to do it, it's just back. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, that's why I just use 12 to, you know, do things that this video is so weird i just needed something to upload i will do a tutorial on tweening and frame by frame animation and stuff in the future let me know what kind of tutorials you guys want to see anyway thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video
Bye.